Hello, I am here with another interview for the Zombies Need Brains Kickstarter. This time I am finally talking to an author who's working in the same anthology that I am, which is Breaking the Glass Slipper, uh, Jose Iriarte. And so, Joe, tell me about the story that you're thinking about writing or possibly have written, but no, I don't think you've written it yet. Yeah, no, I haven't begun yet. Uh, what I basically like to do when I'm getting ready to write a new short story is just make a list of, of things that I wanna bounce off of. I got, um, through Codex, I got some wonderful advice from Byler Kafton years ago about just kind of how to brainstorm and bouncing from thought to thought. And so I just wanna, I'm gonna sit down and make a list of every fairy tale trope I can think of and then try to think of ways to subvert them. I, I find the the coolest stories seem to me anyway to come from from taking something and trying to find a way. Can I can I misread this? You know, can I mis uh, hear a, a homophone or homonym? Or uh, can I find a can a dad joke <laughs> something? You know, can I find a way to to interpret something differently that allows me that sends me in an unexpected direction. And whatever it is that kind of made that turn in the first place might, the specific might disappear, but then the direction is finally something kind of different. And so I'm going to start playing with it, you know, go out to, um, if I could, you know, my Starbucks used to factor heavily into my writing process and it hasn't in two years, but um, if I can go find an open porch and, and consume a lot of uh, a lot of caffeine, then uh, I'll just start. What I do is I set a timer. I still use um, write or die, which if you want me to talk about, um, you want me to talk about. Yeah, write or die? tell tell the viewers what write or die is because that's a that's a gutsy thing to be using in my opinion. It, it uh, I just I, I guess I need something to put a little redirection pressure on me. So Write or Die is an app. It's both a web app and a downloadable app um, that you can pay for, um, or you can use it for free on the web. And it it's based on negative reinforcement, although they've added some positive reinforcement settings as well. But negative reinforcement actually works a lot better for me. Uh, and that is if you go too long without typing anything, it's going to do something. So I have it set to after 10 or 12 seconds, the screen starts to change colors, uh, going from like a pink to a darker pink to a red. And uh, if you wait long enough, it'll start um, either deleting your words or disemboweling your words. Um, just kind of to know that there's a consequence there. And actually, I never lose any words because all I need is the screen changing colors and that redirects me. And, uh, and so I, if, I'm, if I'm writing for real, I'll set it for 15 minutes. I know a lot of people do like Pomodoros and they write for 25 minutes. My attention span isn't long enough for that. So I set it for 15 minutes and then I take a little break. But when I'm trying to generate ideas, I just set it for five minutes and it's just, it's stream of consciousness. Uh, words, 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 no grammar, you know. Uh, trying to, to bounce from thought to thought until I land on something that I didn't expect to land on. So sometime in the next uh, week or two, I'm going to go out and make some time and, and try to come up with an idea. And then I actually, I go out for a long drive and, uh, and just let my subconscious work. Oh, awesome. And you live in a good area for long drives. You live in a pretty good area for long drives. Yeah. <laughs> not good for a lot of things, but it is good for that. Awesome. So this is not your first appearance in Zombie Needs Brains Anthology. You've actually been an anchor author for another one. Uh, the My Battery is Low and It is Getting Dark, which is just an entire tiny story in one title. So tell us a little bit about uh, that story. Tease us into wanting to go grab the anthology. Well, the anthology has a lot of cool stories besides my own. Um, it has a, a wonderful story by Merck Penn Wolfmore and a story by uh, Alethea Contest that I love. And I'm trying to remember the very first story. Unfortunately, I don't remember the title, um, but it, it was also wonderful. Uh, my story was called Brewing Insurrection. All of these stories were about technology that had um, become no longer functional for its original purpose, but that finds new life. Mm -hmm. And so being an extreme coffee addict and also trying to, to work in my uh, Cuban American roots, um, I thought about, you know, when I was a kid, everybody had those, um, 
those stovetop espresso, well, everybody I knew had those stovetop espresso makers that look kind of like those Soyuz capsules, you know, the, the mocha pots. Yeah. And so I wanted to, I knew I wanted to, very early, I wanted to do something with one of those uh, espresso pots. And, uh, and so I imagined, well, what if, uh, you know, how would it no longer be in use? What if coffee uh, had gone the way of the cap, the way the Cavendish banana appears to be going. What if coffee yeah. um, was, were extinct as we know it. And so espresso were no longer possible and no, oh, no, <laughs> but uh, so then I imagine kind of a slightly you know, post-apocalyptic future, which is very not my usual territory and um, a, a fragmented balkanized North America run kind of by just powerful warlord oligarch type people and a, a woman who makes her living um, offering naturopathic uh, medicines and such. Um, so she uses the mocha pot, for instance, to make cannabis butter and, and things like that. And um, her wife and her grandson, unbeknownst to her, are actually like they are rebelling against the local authority figure and her whole outlook is Lilo try to stay safe but she gets kind of drawn into their conflict and uses her knowledge her knowledge of herbs and and poisons and stuff like that to, to strike a blow oh that's awesome mm -hmm. All right. a question I have been asking every person in these interviews so far is what is your dream theme anthology? What are you dying to write for that zombie needs brains, which has already done quite a range? You know, what haven't they done that you would like to, them to do? Well, I think, I think my wheelhouse is writing about relationships, um, not necessarily romantic relationships, not sometimes, but um, sibling relationships, parent-child relationships, uh, or romantic relationships. And so I'd love some sort of story about relationships that are some sort of anthology of stories that are of relationships that are thwarted by spec fic situations, you mm -hmm. know, and I'm thinking about um, like thinking about books that are that are in this flavor. I'm thinking about The Time Traveler's Wife or I'm thinking about uh, David Levitham's uh, Every Day, you know, where crazy spec situations are are complicating not not making impossible but complicating mm -hmm. relationships nice. that would be a fun anthology right. be a lot of cool okay so tell us about your latest story in uncanny which i will stick a link to in the blurbage attached to this video proof by induction I, i'd love to thank you for putting the link in um so Proof by Induction came out in the May, June Uncanny. I believe that's 40, maybe, I don't know. Um, and it's, uh, it's it, it was a stretch for me because it's uh, the first time I've ever written a story about mathematics. And I, I've had a lot of people say to me over the years, well, Joe, you're a math teacher, so write something about math. And I've always felt the opposite. It's because I have a degree in math, I have a really keen sense of how very shallow my knowledge is. <laughs> And, and so I think I'd find it easier to BS about um, going through wormholes or, you know, physics that doesn't exist where I would just know that I was BSing. Um, but the idea of writing a math story has always intimidated me. Um, it's also a really personal story because the, the heart of the story, so it's a story about a, a college math professor whose career is floundering and he thinks that he can save his career if he can finish a project that he was working on with his father to prove uh, like an unproven conjecture. It's like a millennium problem type thing, if you're familiar with the millennium problems, um, except his father right before the beginning of the story has passed away, um, but he's continuing to work with his father through the use of a device called the CODA, which is a, a device that allows grieving people to have like one last interaction with their deceased as they were at the moment, you know, just like within the last five minutes. So the coda isn't an actual human being. It can't mature or grow or anything like that, but it does have all of the deceased's knowledge at the end. So if you wanted to say something like, hey, was there an insurance policy? You know, we're, we're not finding the will. You know, these are conversations, or if you just want a chance to say goodbye, I love you, whatever. Right. But instead, he is attempting to collaborate with the coda to, to prove uh, a math theorem. 
and um, actually wrote the whole bit, you know, basically the non-mathematical part of the story. I wrote it as a much shorter story about a month after my father passed away. Oh. And I poured into it a lot of the feelings that I had about things that I had wanted to hear and never could hear and just kind of trying to go back and seek those, but knowing that that person is not able to give me what I'm looking for, you know? And so that's the emotional heart of the story. And it was way too kind of raw, um, just like that. So kind of grafting on that mathematical storyline gave the story a little bit more room, you know? That sounds awesome. I'll have to, I will definitely look for that. Yay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, any last words of advice for writers who are thinking about doing a story to answer the open call for one of these anthologies? Well, I mean, definitely encouragement. Um, I don't know that I have a sense yet of, of, um, of what people should stick to or stick away from yet. Um, but I will tell you that, uh, that well, I was going to say Joshua's a math professor, so maybe something uh, nice and mathematical, but he's not actually one of the co-editors for this yeah. one. Yeah. So um, I would definitely, so the Crystal is, of the two co-editors, she's the one that I've worked with before, and she was one of the co-editors for My Battery is Low and It is Getting Dark. So maybe check and see those stories yeah. and get a feel for the kind of, I mean, I think that I'm drawn to telling stories about relationships and stories that are heavy on the feels. And I feel like maybe Crystal is drawn to acquiring stories like that. Mm -hmm. So awesome. that's what I can think of is maybe try to focus on those things. Perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to end things there and say thank you for talking to me. It's been lovely. And thank you very much. It's always awesome to talk to you. Awesome.